So I was inside here expanding this area. I was able to get it about a foot further in here and freed up quite a bit of room. But more importantly, I was able to shape this wall a little bit better and I just ran out of material. So I don't have this carpet and I've ordered some, it just hasn't come in yet, but I do wanna fill that gap right there. So I've created a piece that will go there temporarily. Basically, I had this sheet of plywood. I just measured that gap. I had some carpet right here. These are little square carpet tiles I got off Amazon and I've just wrapped it so it'll fit that little area. And again, this is kind of a temporary fix until I get all of the uh, floor covering material in. That will go right there to cover that up. So this has been really fun actually because it was interesting being able to explore where there was essentially unused space and I found out that everything behind this wall up to about here, which was closed off, all of this was unused space. If you didn't catch that video, I installed a 12 volt cigarette style plug right here. I relocated the spray port, which was right there, right here. The reason I put this here was to cover up the hole, and it also gave me a very useful powering option now outside. And uh, again, the spray port was very, very easy to install. I just cut a hole through the RV right here with a two and a half inch hole saw bit, and I was able to install that there, cleaned it up a little bit, and now I'm just gonna seal off that opening right there. There we go, all covered up. I think it looks okay to be temporary, you know? The screws that I use weren't long enough right there, so I had to go to a little bit longer screw. That's why you see all the different colors of screws here. These are really nice piercing screws. They're super, super clean in terms of cutting through and not possibly splitting the wood. That's why I use those. Very nice. And I installed this stainless steel L bracket right here just to make sure that this doesn't get slammed up against and hits the PEX connection right here. So that's just, again, just a little bit of reassurance. It really isn't putting much pressure on this right here. It's just to prevent it again. If there's something in here that shifts, it doesn't shift and hit it hard enough to break a line possibly. But yeah, this is my new expanded storage area. Very, very cool. All right, guys, so now we're going to talk about the main point of this video. So in front of me, you were looking at a product that you may or may not have ever heard of. This is called a Hughes Autoformer. This is a very, very interesting product. It's kind of heavy and it's rather large. And again, most people probably have never heard of something like this. Now, if you've heard of, you know, surge protectors and surge guards and things like that for your RV, you are kind of looking at something that's relatively similar. If you also look at some of those devices that you connect to your 50 or 30 amp cable you plug in and it analyzes the power coming in and determines whether or not to turn the power on, again, you're also looking at something kind of similar. But what this specifically does is provide a much higher level of protection whenever you're dealing with typical campground power. Now, I would probably say the vast majority of campgrounds have pretty stable, clean power. The problem that you deal with is occasionally, because of all the RVs at that specific RV park, you may deal with voltage fluctuations. Voltage fluctuations can be very dangerous to the electronics inside of your RV. Not just the actual components in your RV, but also things you have plugged into the wall. If you deal with a significant drop in voltage, that can lead to things being damaged equipment not getting the correct type or amount of power, and then all of a sudden you have a damaged electrical component, whether or not it is your RV or whether or not it is something you have plugged into your RV. So this Hughes Autoformer performs a few different tasks. First of all, it is a typical surge protector. Not only that, it has a feature to tell you when you should actually replace the surge protection unit inside of this, which is also really cool. But this performs several other features in addition to being up to a 4,800 joules surge protector. Now, what else does this do? First of all, it does what a lot of the other systems do. It monitors and analyzes shore power. But what it also does is boosts your voltage to maintain consistent voltage. Because again, a drop in voltage can cause severe issues with the electronics of your RV or even other electronics that you have plugged in. 
So this, again, kind of wraps the entire protection package up into one. Now, this isn't a power management system. So this isn't going to go in and disable components of your RV independently so you can, you know, run some things and not run other things. That's not what this is designed to do. This is designed to be kind of a surge protector on steroids. It does the function of a lot of other systems out there, but then it adds the additional functionality of being a voltage booster. So... That is the purpose of this specific piece of equipment. There are a couple accessories you can get. You can get a lock for it, so you can actually lock it up to the actual power pedestal at the RV campground. You can even get a cover, and I have one right here. So you have a cover for it as well. So if you have this sitting outside and you want to protect it against UV, or if you just want to make sure you keep this in the best possible shape, considering it is a pretty pricey item, then this is something you might want to consider because again, it just adds a little extra protection to it. Now, my sponsors over at eTrailer actually provided this to me because there really aren't a lot of videos on this product aside from the ones that Hughes has put out and I believe one that eTrailer's put out. But again, this is something that can come in really handy if you're looking for that extra piece of mind whenever you're connecting to an RV campground. Now, some ways you can generally detect if you've experienced some power fluctuations in your RV is if things just kind of don't work the way they should whenever you're using things in your RV. Let's say you're in the RV, you're watching TV, all your lights all of a sudden flicker or dim, or your TV shuts off randomly, or you know your air conditioner doesn't seem like it's running well, it seems like it's struggling. All of those can be attributed to voltage issues at the specific RV campground. So that's where something like this, again, can come in handy because it provides that voltage boosting capability. And it's essentially a large transformer as well. So I'm going to go ahead and unbox it so you get a better idea of the size and what it looks like. Okay, so now we have it unboxed, and as you can see, it actually comes with the lock that I had mentioned earlier, so you can kind of secure it to your power pedestal at the RV campground. Now, the instructions are actually very simple and easy to understand. It basically tells you to make sure that the power pedestal breaker is off. Then you're going to plug the autoformer in, make sure it's a good fit. You're going to turn on the breaker to the pedestal and check the LEDs on the front of the autoformer which will basically tell you what's going on in terms of if you're good to go or not. And there's either red or green to indicate that. If all the lights are green, you're going to turn off the breaker, then plug your RV into your 50 amp connection here on the side of the autoformer, and then you're going to switch the breaker back on. Never plug the RV into a live receptacle. Basically, you always want to make sure that if you're plugging your RV into a power pedestal, you want to make sure the breaker's turned off, and then once it's plugged in, then turn it on. It's more of a safety thing than anything. Your autoformer is now monitoring the park voltage. If it drops to 113 volts or below, it'll boost at 10%. You'll see the boost light come on. So very, very cool. And they have a ton of other pieces of equipment as well. And they show you all the different features of each one of them. They're all essentially surge protectors, but they also have some additional features as you move up in model. It's available for both 30 and 50 amp. There are other products on the market like this, but this is the only product like this that I've seen. So a lot of these typical type of surge protectors they basically monitor if there's an issue with the power but this one actually monitors but if it detects the voltage drop it kicks in a boost and it brings you back up to a safe operating level so that is really cool um, i'm going to tell you that this thing is not lightweight i will guesstimate and i don't know off the top of my head but i'm guessing it probably weighs between 30 to 40 pounds it's very heavy for what it is what i probably would have preferred to see is a 50 amp connection right here and a 50 amp connection right here so basically you take your rv connection you plug it in and then it gives you maybe a cable that you can disconnect and you can use it on either side just so you have a little bit more flexibility where you want to place this right it has a warranty on here and it says that it does not cover it for rain or water damage so that's probably the biggest one. Acts of God, lightning, hurricanes, flood, things like that don't cover it as well. So if this thing gets damaged because of the protection process, it might not be covered. The big one, though, is likely going to be rain. So having the little cover for it is going to be important. I don't know how much rain this can withstand before it gets damaged, but I would hate for something like this to get wet because you might have another safety risk on your hands. I imagine it's probably going to be okay unless it's like a heavy rain or a downpour. But again... I would highly recommend you get the little cover for it. I did find the lock in the box, so again, the lock looks like it's included. And at eTrailer, this product is around $600 plus. So if you get it, 
Keep in mind it's roughly twice the price as your traditional style surge protector, so you're getting quite a bit more with it. It's kind of an all-in-one solution, but also keep in mind it is pricey, so it is worth getting the cover for it and protecting this because, you know, if you lose this, if it gets damaged or destroyed, or if it gets damaged just because of neglect, you're losing a pretty heavy investment. So again, from a value perspective, you know, it's one of those things that can you justify the $610, $615 that it costs, but also if you don't get it and you have a problem, how much in repairs are you gonna have to dish out for your RV to get back up and running again? Depending on what appliances break, depending on what gets damaged, of course. So this is one of those things that isn't necessarily gonna guarantee it's gonna prevent something from happening, but what I would imagine is, is that it at least is gonna give you a little bit more peace of mind in the event something does happen. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. We're gonna use this whenever we take the RV out and uh, see how it works. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.